Hello, I am Esteban Mendoza. This is my presentation called The Use of Choreography and Body Movements by Latin American Choirs in Canada, Video Performance Analysis. The inclusion of choreography and body movements is a typical hallmark of Latin American choirs in their performances, as according to Walt Jenner does, they consider the body as a necessary territory to inhabit for the expression and creation of new forms of transmission. Latin American immigration to Canada has resulted in the founding of musical groups, including Latin American choirs. Through my research, I wanted to discover whether these choirs have maintained in their current performance the inclusion of choreography and body movements as an important feature. The aim of this study is to examine this practice of Latin American immigrant choirs in Canada in order to understand the scope, characteristics, and function of the use of choreography and body movements in their performance practice. In terms of scope, my research has determined that Latin American immigrant choirs in Canada maintain inclusion of choreography and body movements as an important element during their live performances in the Canadian context. My preliminary findings suggest that these physical movements are recurrently used by these choirs as a way of preserving the Latin American repertoire in its most genuine way of interpretation. This is achieved by uniting the musical styles with elements of the dances associated with them in such a way as to highlight their characteristic properties and reveal the multimodal nature of Latin American choral music. For my research, I can suggest that this choreography and body movements fulfill a function that goes beyond the enhancement of choral performance to forge Latin American representative elements of identity in the Canadian context. Before continuing, it is necessary to delimit the concepts of choreography and body movements, which are the basic terms on which this research is conducted. We know that choreography is the art of making dances, the gathering and organization of movement into order and pattern. The word derives from the Greek for dance and for write. The composition of dance is creative in the same way in which the composition of music is. Performance studies scholar Andrea Lepecki establishes that choreography is a mechanism that simultaneously distributes and organizes dances in relationship to perception and signification. Choreographer Kathleen Colo goes further and states that uh, a definition of choreography must consider three dimensions choreography as notation, as a social model, and as a language. These three approaches to the concept of choreography are what guide me in this analysis. In the context, context of choral music, these approaches help me to understand choreography as the art of composing and carrying out physical movement into order and pattern as a part of choral performance, as well as it is possible to address the involved aspects of the dances associated with each musical style that I cover in the study. Furthermore, this organization considers that the choreography is written, implies a collectivity in its movement, and tries above all to communicate something. With respect to body movements, I find interesting the vision of philosophers Elizabeth Pachery and John Michael, in which they state that the expressive body movements of choral singers in a non choreographed choreographer setting may be considered improvisational and hold the same potential in synchronization rates. Know that these figures are not in reference to the coordination of aural signals, but simply peripheral body movement. Nor does this imply that singers should move at, at exactly the same rate and direction during performance. Choral music scholars Frank Fuller and Gail L. Schaub understood that it was necessary to create a concept that united choral singing with physical expression. That is why in 1973, they developed the concept of, the concept of choralography, which is intended to denote fairly simple movement that can be used by the choir to augment visually the impact of its work aurally. In other words, choral Choreography is movement, gesture, or pantomime, which visually effaces the text or mood of a work during a current performance. However, I believe that neither of these two terms, expressive body movement and choreography, uh, fully address the concept of body movements that my research needs to cover. 
Specifically, I mean that the body movements observed in the analyzed performances are not usually improvised, often respond to the coordination of our oral signals, and generally the choristers move at the same rate and direction their performance. These three aspects do not concede with the definition proposed uh, by Patcher and Michael. On the other hand, the term choreography, according to Puller and Shaw, it might, it might not be as culturally relevant for the musical tradition I am studying, as it is rooted in the text and mood, and not musical genres and styles. Therefore, a personal understand body movements uh, as the body expression carried out during the choreography performance, which consists of a simple series of coordinated movements usually established, established informally, suggested by the choral director and or agreed upon the characters. They are usually simple and repetitive movements without necessarily making the relation to the textual content of the world, related to its musical genre, using one or two elements of the dance traditionally associated with that particular musical style. Thus, we can understand that the main difference between choreography and body movements lies, lies on the relative complex, carefully established and synchronized character of the former and the free and less complex nature of the latter. Both can be related to characters' dances, but whereas choreography includes more elements of dance, body movements choose simply, el simply elements of derived from them. Once these foundational concepts are established, uh, it is possible to move on to the details of the study. According to my research, there are eight Latin American choirs in all Canada, of which seven have uh, videos of their concerts available on the internet. The research analyzes audiovisual records of our performances by these seven choirs from 2006 to 2019. This chart shows the choirs of study together with some data that it, it has been possible to collect so far. As we can see, the choirs are located in Western Canada and Ontario. Most of them were founded after, after the year 2000, and they typically include around 15 and 20 members. In addition, it is important to note that the origin of the specific repertoire performed by each choir is directly related to the nationality of the conductor. That is to say, the choir whose conductors are Venezuelan, specialized in the interpretation of that country's repertoire, or at least included, included to a great extent. The same applies to the choir which has a Brazilian director and the choir which has a Mexican director. I achieved these proposed objectives by conducting analysis of the available videos of the choirs in their streaming channels on social networks. In the search, I found 115 videos available from the seven choirs, totaling around eight hours of video footage, of which 48 songs were considered in this analysis. The criteria for selecting these works were to include only live performances, to avoid repeated sounds by the same choirs, to consider mostly videos containing complete works, and to include videos with decent recording technical quality. Thus, of the 48 works performed, 43 of them include choreography and body movements in their choreo performances, a fact that, that shows the importance given to physical performance by Latin American choirs. In order to analyze each work of the videos, I have made observations guided by some of the following questions. Is choreography or body movements used in the video performance? What is the repertoire performed in the video? Which musical style does it belong to? What is the relation between the text of the work and the choreography or body movement? Is the conductor directing the vocal performance and the, and the physical movements at, at the same time, or just the vocal performance? These questions are now answered, answered by developing and relating the various ideas that arise. In this diagram, it can be seen that of the seven choirs studied, six of, of them use body movements in their performances, and two of them, in addition to body movements, use choreography. Only one of the choirs doesn't work with either category in, the, in its performances. The results of this diagram show the great consideration given by the conductors and of course there's the physical performance within choreo performance. This is how the performance of these choirs provides multimodal information.
which refers to the projection of two or more sensory stimuli simultaneously. The multimodality here is, is explicit because although the removal of the choreography or body moments from the performance would not greatly affect the sound result itself, in this case at least, such a removal would result in the degradation of the multimodal message the choristers and conductors it intended to convey. Thinking about it in this way, I consider, I consider that choreography and body moments should be welcomed uh, within the choral performance because their inclusion reaches the complete musical performance without distorting, of course, the sound message. In short, it is it, this multimodality uh, that favors the preservation of the Latin American repertoire in its most genuine way of interpretation. In this diagram now and this later, we can observe that the absolute majority of the musical styles addressed by the seven choirs are performed together in body moments. Four of them are performed only with choreography, and three of them are performed including both, both forms, uh, body moments and choreography. It's interesting to know that uh, the great variety, variety, variety variety of musical styles that coverage and are adapted to be performed in a multimodal way, choral performance together with physical performance. This speaks to the desire to relate musical styles to the respective dances or related dances with the aim of carrying out a genuine interpretation of the work with, while uh, at the same time enhancing the properties of the particular musical style. Regarding to the relation between the text of the works and the physical moments used, I can say that of the 48 works analyzed, only four of them include choreographies or body moments that are directly related to the text of the songs. This shows that the inclusion of physical performance doesn't respond to a need uh, to enhance the textual context of the work, but rather they are developed in relation to the musical style of the particular piece, borrowing dance components from the available spectrum. It is important to note that all of the musical styles li list listed in, in the previous diagram, with, with the exception of children's music, uh, music uh, Latin pop, reggae, and bossa nova, are also dances, genres that feature their own characteristic movements, or are closely related, related to a dance genre. It's in this way that the attempt to enhance the musical work only by reinforcing its multimodal, multimodal character, by developing its some visual scope simultaneously, is once again evident. In other words, what is important here are the strictly musical and bodily aspects, and not the text, the textual ones, in order to maintain Latin American authenticity in choral performance. This video excerpt shows a word called Boyerengue, performed by, by Fusion Latina. It's, a, it's musical style is Boyerengue too. Um, here the body moments performed by the choir, although simplified, are directly related to Boyerengue as a dance genre. <laughs> In the analyzed videos, it is possible to see that some directors of the study choirs not only conduct the vocal performance during the, during the concerts, but sometimes they also conduct the physical performance. In this diagram, it can be observed on the one hand that the choirs whose directors only conduct the vocal performance, and on the other hand, those who conduct both types of performances simultaneously. Here, it is worth noting that the importance given by the choirs to physical performance, to the extent that the directors of three choirs are, res are responsible for conducting the physical performance, participating in the display too, at the same time as they conduct the, the vocal performance. As mentioned earlier, earlier uh, of the 48 work works addressed, five of them don't include choreography or body movements. I have sorted the remaining, the remaining 43 works based 
on their time, time signature, differentiate, differentiating them by gentle moments and marked moments used by choristers and director um, in their choral performance. The explanation of each of the, these concepts is as follows. Gentle moments are a smaller range of physical moments during the choral performance. This means that, for instance, choristers make smooth gestures involving head, neck, shoulders, and truck movements, and sometimes involving soft body swaying without moving from the spot. These, these gestures are most evident during the beginnings of musical phrases, breathing cesuras, and changes in dynamics. Marked moments are greater range of physical moments during the core performance. The moments included here are wide and clear. They generally include displays, displacements on the stage, turns and leaning of the body, arms and hands movements, etc. Although all choreographies are included in this category, um, there are performances with body moments that also use marked moments. In this video excerpt, uh, we are going to listen to Negra del Tamunangue by Los Parranderos de Vancouver. It includes a choreography with marked movements and its musical style is Tamborera Maravilla. <laughs> In this bar graph, we can observe that the marked body movements are used in a greater number of works by the choirs. From my analysis, in most works, choristers and directors use body movements on choreography to perceive and deal with the matters in a more precise way. In other words, they use their bodies to feel the work's tempo and rhythm closer and, and accurately, and to be able to manage, e manage it in, with greater confidence. This feature somehow becomes or maintains a hallmark of Latin American choirs in Canada as a way of embodying the performance or even more evidently. Um, I, in a, it's no coincidence that this embodiment of time uh, can, can be observed in a great number of performances covered here. Because if we consider that, according to scholars Overy and Molnar Sackets, physical performance is is nothing more than coordinated activity and, and effective experience that results from the sound. It's possible to appreciate this phenomenon as a tangible means of approaching Latin American's identity even minimally and still contributing to its preservation. The time signatures of the works perform, performed were included here to show that the intensity of the physical moments doesn't depend on the particular matter of each work, since in each of them, except in the case of Fifth Aid, um, which is only one work, the marked mo moments were predominant, that is, they were included in a greater number of works. With the same intention, the musical styles with which each time signature is developed were specified. Since the musical styles are not decisive either when a, a choir decides to use marked movements in its choral performance. Instead, what I want to emphasize, as I stated previously, is that this embodiment of time responds to a passionate way of highlighting Latin American identity with the tools these choirs have. As a corollary to this analysis, it, it is important to consider that, as a scholars Ordas and Blanco state, body movement has a fundamental role in the construction, execution, and perception of musical performance. Together with the auditory component, they constitute a multimodal interaction that the performer uses to regulate his hair performances and co-construct the current interpretation, understood as a practice of intersubjective meaning. 
This multimodal interaction is one is that finally generates the intersubjective meaning directly related to the search and our maintenance of identity, because all decisions made and action actions taken, such as the inclusion of choreography or body moments in the performances, the converting of different musical styles, the addition of musical instruments, or the director's decision regarding to conduct a vocal and the physical performance at the same time, are made taken as a precedent an existing tradition and, and, and not, not just a, a whim or contextualized idea um, conceived by the director or the choristers. And tradition, each time it is invoked, is strongly linked to a sense of identity that is reaffirmed due to their recognition and appreciation of one's cultural roots. Furthermore, if in addition, thanks to this multimodal interaction, a more satisfactory interpretation is achieved on stage, the sense of identity becomes even more tangible and enjoyable. Based on my analysis, I can say that for at least four of the seven choirs studied, body moments and choreography have a privileged precision in comparison to vocal performance due to the dedication of com and complexity shown in the, in the moments and because on many occasions their directors conduct both vocal and physical performance at the same time. The great majority of the videos analyzed include choreography and body movements in the performance, which speaks of the importance attributed to physical performance given by the choirs. Considering that my preliminary findings suggest that choreography and body movements are recurrently used by the squires as, as a means of preserving the Latin American repertoire in its most genuine form of performance, we can speculate in an early stage that the physical per performance fulfills the function of forging Latin American representative elements of identity in the Canadian context. While this reflection may be plausible, it's only an assumption that needs to be corroborated in a future research using interviews with choristers and conductors as a primary source. In the meantime, we can infer that for Latin American choirs in Canada, physical movements are useful not only to enhance the sound message, but also at the same time involves a matter of identity that needs to be brought to the fore. In other words, choreography and body movements become a way per excellence to express and preserve Latin American identity at uh, the time of including them in the choral performance. In short, only under this multimodality, it is possible to perform the Latin American repertoire in its most genuine way of interpretation. Thank you very much for attending.